Hello there, this is Jake with Reverb. I wanted to show you a couple bass lines from one of my favorite bass players of all time, the legendary Pino Palladino. Pino got his start as a session musician in the late 70s and early 80s, but most of us know him as the bass player on a lot of the Soulquarian records for D'Angelo and Eric Abadi. If not, some of you guys might know him as the replacement bassist for John Entwistle in The Who. If not, maybe you know him from some Elton John records some Nine Inch Nails records. The point is the dude's played with everybody. Today I wanted to look at some of the bass lines from the Soulquarian era, and some of his more R&B stuff with D'Angelo, Eric Abadi, and Jose James. First one I wanted to look at, the bass line for Send It On off of D'Angelo's Voodoo. It's a very simple, very groovy line. It's all about that locked in feeling between the bass and Questlove's kick drum. It's a 6-8 feel. First couple beats start on the beat and then he gets a nice little syncopation at the end of the first measure. Now this right here, this slide, this is one of my favorite things about Pino's playing. He had all these weird kind of rubbery ways that he would play around the neck of the instrument. Those little kind of trills that he would do. Now one of the tricky things about playing some of Pino's bass lines is making sure you get a lot of the articulation right. He was very specific about how long he'd hold some of his notes, right? You hear this. A lot of that nice space that he's leaving to, to create some tension. In addition, one of my favorite things about Pino's playing, especially from this era, is the really loose, laid back way that he would kind of play around the beat. All right, taking a look at another one of his bass lines, this time the charade for D'Angelo's Black Messiah. Super cool line, he's just walking up and down the chords, but there's something so melodic about the way that he phrases a lot of this, right? Yeah, those hammer-ons. Uh, it's, it's not quite a trill, but there's, there's something all about the phrasing that's just super pino. That right there. Going up to the nine, one five up to nine. That was, it's one of my favorite things that Pino does. It's super melodic, it's super cool, and it draws attention to the bass, but not in a, in a show-off-y kind of way to me. Now I wanna take a look at some of the looseness of Pino's playing, starting with Jose James' Trouble off the record, No Beginning, No End. Thank you. 
cool groovy stuff going on in this bass line. One of my favorites is what he does during the verse, the way he's just kind of dragging just a little bit behind the beat. Make sure when you're trying this stuff out that you play with some of the phrasing. Play it with a drum machine if you've got one. It's such a good tool to practice this stuff with. It's all about that light hiccup, right? Laying some of it a little bit behind the beat with the articulation, not necessarily dragging, right? And still pushing it, locking up with the backbeat, right? On beat three. Another really cool technique that Pino uses is, is seen in this intro riff. Where he uses his two fingers to, to simulate that kind of sloppy double tap with the kick feel. A legend has it that D'Angelo described this technique to Questlove as just playing drunk, right? Keep the hi-hat in time, but everything else, just imagine it kind of drunk. It still exists around that hi-hat, but it's not necessarily locked to the grid the same way that we would if we were quantizing, for instance. All right, let's take a look at Pino's playing on Erica Badu's Cleva off of her record, Mama's Gun. It's one of my favorite bass lines of his because it's where his style really shines through, right? You've got this really cool 16th note kind of muted thing that's really faint in the recording but comes out of nowhere. Nine again. Then in the chorus, he's got this really cool snaky chromatic bass line that kind of jumps the beat in the third measure before we go back to the fourth. And the second time around, there's a kind of call and response between that figure. This was, this was one of my favorite things about Pino's style, is how thematic he is. Not just melodic, but thematic. Bringing stuff across the recording. That, planting these little seeds that come back to you later, right? So that was a very, 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 very brief look some of the many records that Pino has played on. If you liked anything that you heard, please check out his discography. He's played with everyone under the sun and everything on it that he's played is a gem. This is Jake with Reverb, signing off. See you next time.